Welcome to this edition of Able Dinner and Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently abled. I'm Lauren Seiler. I'm Arlene Seiler. And on this program today, we will focus on the Learning Network and also Shockwave. With us to discuss this important issue and the importance of Washington County Mental Health Services is, is Mary Kay Casper. Coordinator of Supportive Employment and Community Integration, and also Wendy Casperlanco, uh, uh, Instructor for Washington County Mental Health and the Learning Network. Thank you for joining us on Thank Able Then On Air. Thank you. Thank you. Um, why don't we start? What is the missions and goals of the Learning Network? Okay. Um, and we want to thank you for having us on this show today. I'm we're really excited about that and the opportunity to talk about how important the work is that happens at Washington County. Um, and the Learning Network is a program within the developmental services area mm -hmm. of Washington County and it is a extensive mm -hmm. program that occurs during the daytime um, for our individuals who live with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Mm -hmm. And the mission is to provide a wide variety, a very versed uh, variety of activities, programs, classes, events, um, opportunities to go on trips mm -hmm. for community integration that will offer, that offer everyone the opportunity to network and develop friendships, to gain a better understanding of who they are in the world and their gifts and their potential, mm -hmm. um, developing skills in, that will help folks become more independent, mm -hmm. um, to have fun. You know, part of the mission is to have fun and to, to learn about yourself. Well, when you say classes, <clears throat> um, since we're talking about instruction, what type of, and you're an instructor, mm -hmm. What type of classes do you offer? Uh, college classes or classes in themselves? These are more informal classes. We have a couple of different kinds of classes. We have drop-in classes, which go on all day, a couple days a week. Um, for example, what one is an open studio for artists to use ah. different media to come in and explore. But it's not just for artists; it's for everybody. Mm -hmm. You might want to try it. I am reminded of. Uh, one of my kids came running in, I think he was about 12. He said, Mom, Mom, I might be a really good tennis player, but if I never played tennis, I'd never know. Mom, Mom, I might be a really good fireman, but if I never had a chance to put a fire out, I'd never know. This is what we do, is we try to give people the opportunity to try things. Right. Like or visiting, to, let's say, visiting a firehouse or something along those lines. Well, come in and put a brush in your hand and see what kind of art you can produce. Uh, Drop in, right. take a pen, take a brush, take a pencil, maybe take scissors and glue and, and fabric and just see what, what you can what make. What about ceramics? Do you, see what, do you any of that? We don't have the facilities for that yet, but we're working on it. Right, right. <laughs> That's I mean, a little messier than we have our set up for. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right, and we yeah. do, there's also opportunity mm -hmm. within those open studio times to write sto write stories mm -hmm. to develop poems and mm -hmm. spoken word mm -hmm. um, the, anything that's like really connected mm -hmm. to the to being creative in your creative expression because yeah. like that is really important to developing us all in a way it helps us to grow and to be able to share a story and a lot of the folks that we work with they get to have that opportunity to tell the and world who they are. And take out the stresses of the right, day, right, the stresses yeah. of the week. Yeah. Um, because, you know, media, <clears throat> media is art. And, uh, for example, uh, um, Mom Pillar just went through, um, you know, Poetry Week or Poetry Month. Uh, why don't you explain to us about the um, poetry uh, that... <clears throat> Orca Media, because uh, Orca Media went to your facility and um, taped uh, some poems or a poetry day. So explain a little bit about that. 
So a couple weeks ago, we were, um, a while back actually, we were invited to participate in Poem City mm -hmm. for Mount Pillar yes. mm -hmm. and through the Kellogg mm -hmm. Library. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> what happened was we, again, we have a number of individuals mm -hmm. that are writing such incredible poetry, you know, sharing who they are in that way. And so Rachel at the library said, yes, come and do a poetry reading to actually open up Poem City for the whole city. Mm -hmm. So that was really, really mm -hmm. great too. And mm -hmm. so for months, I think, <laughs> the people were uh, working on on writing the poems that they wanted to share. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, after all that time of preparing, every we had the poetry reading and it was amazing mm -hmm. at, um, at the Kellogg Library. And I think for most of the folks, and correct me if I'm wrong, Wendy, mm -hmm. this was the first time mm -hmm. that, I mean, I've never sat up and, you know, stood up in front of a group of people and, and shared a poem. So it was like, it was really amazing to, to listen to what people did. The battle. Please ignore my humming, you must understand. It's part of me that I find impossible to change. I have tried, believe me. If it annoys you, just imagine my hatred towards it. Look this time, only at my heart. Oh, I pour it out. This prison does not define me, try as it may. Oh, people hear me. This soul within will fight its way out. I'm pushing. I'm pulling. Pushing through my head. Pulling out my love. Love is in here. Love. Love will conquer hate. Love always wins. So with my love I go to battle. You may not see it. But this raging war inside is real. One day it will end, but for now I go. With love as my sword and shield, I will conquer. My name is Helen Fagritz. My poem is about two, two lovebirds. Once upon a time, there was a lovebird. And it was a bluebird and a robin. They make a nest. Uh, they had a little baby girl bird, and they was happy to be together. My little story was a love birds. I hope you love this story. Bye, little love birds. I love you very much. How, <clears throat> how long <clears throat> has the Learning Network been in existence? So uh, the first incarnation of the Learning Network was about eight and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. And we have gone through some changes since then. Um, it's very important in developmental services to put the person who's getting the support services in the center mm -hmm. of the choices and the plans and to give them options so they can make those choices. And, and that's really what we're all about. And mm -hmm. Now we can do more of that. We rotate our schedule every month. Mm -hmm. So we have new classes. We have repeating classes like the open studios. Um, we have exercise classes that go from month to month but get varied. Those are really popular. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we do a movie once a month. Mm -hmm. And that's not a class, but it's an opportunity to come in and share an interest in something and have some lunch together and talk to your friends and your peers. And, and you show a movie. And we show a movie. Yeah. Um, yeah, because I remember growing up myself, uh, you know, having socialization um, um, amongst right. your own peers yeah. is extremely important. I remember growing mm -hmm. up, uh, going to a recreational mm -hmm. home for people mm -hmm. with special needs myself, and 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 she also. It, 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 if you don't have the socialization, mm -hmm. then you're just in a box, right? Right. right? <clears throat> which brings me, which brings us to this: yeah, the, new administration, the, <laughs> the new administration, the new administration. We're in. I'm talking yeah. about the, um, the current uh, presidential <clears throat> administration. 
<clears throat> is cutting so many programs mm -hmm. for people with special needs or you name mm -hmm. it, he's cutting it, the arts. Um, how important is it to have programs like this? Um, so we, we <clears throat> kind of want to send the message, right. uh, you know, in your opinion, yeah. if programs like this get cut, where do we go from here? Right. Any? Well, hopefully we don't get cut. I mean, and I, my, my understanding is that with some of the laws or the policies that are being developed, that they are taking into consideration um, individuals with living with disabilities, so that that isn't being cut. Um, as deeply as some of the others. Um, mm -hmm. But I think that we all need to keep speaking up. We all need to um, march and go to events and speak to our legislators about the importance of these issues. I mean, one of the things that the Learning mm -hmm. Network supports, as well as within the uh, Division of Community Developmental Disabilities, um, is that we want to build leadership among the individuals that we work with so that they're advocating for themselves too. Mm. And so we have the Friends Helping Friends program that continues to be um, an important part of that. What exactly is that program? It's, a, it's an organization, it's a self-governing organization. Within that, Washington County? Within, yes, of individuals with developmental disabilities that um, it's like a, a governance group, and if this is your self-advocacy group. Friends Helping Friends has been, oh, it has How to be more than 10 there? years that it's been a group. Um, they're a local self-advocates group with folks with uh, intellectual and developmental disabilities, and they send a representative to the Green Mountain Self-Advocates mm -hmm. with their headquarters here in Montpelier, which, which is the statewide mm -hmm. yeah. self-advocates yeah, group. Mm -hmm. um, and speaking up for themselves, yeah. of course, is the best way to get your message across. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And sometimes speaking up is, is, is done. I've taught classes called speaking up. Right. And sometimes it's about going to a class where you are part of a team doing something else, like playing Scrabble, and just getting the opportunity to practice speaking up. Mm -hmm. So we try to give a range of opportunities, plus Mary Kay is our our, uh, because being a strong advocate is extremely important. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. No offense to agencies, a lot of agencies uh, sometimes don't know what the person needs. Ask right. Right. <laughs> the right. person. Right. Can I say right. Vermont does yes. a good job? Yes, Vermont yeah. does an, an yeah. extremely wonderful job. Yes. But then there are some people, because when, when we were at the... Um, the State House for the Disability Day, mm -hmm. there are people that spoke there that fall through the cracks sometimes. And you need yeah. agencies like Washington County, to, which is a wonderful um, county to be in, but um, <clears throat> Washington County Mental Health deals with that um, and helps people speak up for themselves. Right. Right. Because if you don't speak up, um, then just people are going to know, okay, this person needs that. But you have to ask. <clears throat> it's, like, it's like the old example. Going into a restaurant um, and asking someone, what do you want? Well, if a person's challenged, and, you know, ask the person. Just don't assume that that person right. wants something. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Any more to add to that, like advocacy? Well, I mean, I think that, you know, like, I mean, Wendy spoke so eloquently about it. I mean, I think that the folks meet on a, a well, monthly, t sometimes twice a month to gather together. And you mentioned about socialization. That's another way to network with each other and to spend time with each other, too, because because they're going to support each other in being self-advocates <coughs> too, and we need to support that. We need to get, you know, offer as many opportunities as possible for people to get together so they can talk to each other about what the issues are um, and to main, make plans to deal with stuff. What was really the main reason why the Learning Network started? Um, because 
What was there a reason behind it? Because there was a lack of socialization, or I think if you look back historically, going back twenty years, there were a group of what we called day programs in developmental services yes. across the state. Yes. And people would come to a centralized location, yes. and then they would fan out from there to go to work, or some people went directly to work, some would work in groups, um, and the model has changed in the last 20 years. From like for the better. workshops, etc. Well, they weren't necessarily sheltered workshops, although we did have yes. yeah. things that were kind of like that mm -hmm. 20 years ago, and, and certainly 30 years ago, yes. Mm -hmm. um, but they recently shut, shut them down. I know they closed them. Right. Right. And let me say oh, amen. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but um, people would come in and, and we had uh, different locales. We had a locale where people went to do sewing. Mm -hmm. And a locale where people went to do a uh, variety of activities. It's 20 years ago now. But that had kind of all stopped. And the idea was that people would go into the community like everybody else does. And they would get the assistance they needed to live as independently as possible, to go to church and go to the Legion and go shopping and whatnot, with the least interference from their support staff. And that is, in fact, still our mission, is to listen and ask the questions and then pay attention and try to make that happen. Um, but there was a lack of things to do. You can only you go for coffee so many times in a week. <laughs> You find that in a lot of communities, like, I mean, it's not, no offense to New York, it's not like a huge city. Right. So you'll have to find uh, uh, um, a place, you know, go here, go there, right. but in the bigger cities you have more of a variety, it just depends. Um, now, it, your title. You, you deal with employment. I'm going to get, get to this. Talking about socialization, sometimes being on a job, you get to socialize. Um, if there's no time to socialize, if the boss says no, you know, not to socialize now, then you go to work. What types of um, employment, you don't have to say whom, but what types of employment does Washington County or with your position or if someone's interested in, let's say, working for a restaurant or working for a hospital right. or something like right. that, so right. can you go into some of that? Sure, and, and I also want to, if it's okay, to speak a little bit because yes. employment and the learning network are tied to it in terms of what you said around the government. Mm -hmm. it, you know, like these programs that we offer help to build self-reliance, you know, and, and help individuals to grow into who they want to be in the world and to, and to be successful mm -hmm. and to have That's careers important. and to contribute to society in the way they want to and if you know like if the government is understanding of that they would see the value of contributing to that and putting the money into it mm -hmm. we spend you know you spend more money um, if you're not going to support programs like this if we support programs like this, then we are creating communities where everybody yeah. gets to contribute and so. be successful in their own independent way. Yeah. And, and I think the Learning Network does that. You know, we teach about independent living skills around budgets and a dress for success. <laughs> Wendy does all these great <laughs> programs that helps our individuals to realize all kinds of things about their lives and to become so, better at what they're example, doing. For example, you yeah. would teach somebody or have a mock interview right. uh, yeah, we did uh, that. how yeah. to dress for a job, like they would, um, they sit there and shirt, have a, tie, you know, two of us would sit there and have a um, mock, you know. You know, certain things, have your resume ready, that, 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 that type of thing. Um, yeah. You know, uh, yeah, just an so, example, uh, when I was, um, at my, at my former station that I um, mm -hmm. freelanced for, I would mentor people with special needs through agencies, and they would come to me, and I would teach them how to be a reporter, how to <laughs> how to how to write a story, th those mm -hmm. types of things, uh, you know, how to dress for camera, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. So the, these are are important skills to have, and today's job market. Yes, 
um, employers have to be sensitive to people with special needs, but disability in a sense goes out the window. You're here to work, what can you, or what can you bring to the table to work here, right. you know, that type of thing. Right. So, um, so they've worked. Right, we have someone with a developmental disability can do any job that anybody else can do. Yes. What, and we, what type of jobs do they get? Well, what type, say? What type of job do they get? So you can have, we have people that work in full-time careers, I mean, for instance, at the state house, you know, people that want to work in um, convenience stores or work um, in higher education. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you name it, we can, you know, see that there if, are individuals. If, if there's a opening or do you help them find it, how, how does that work? Because I know I jobs some are, work is uh, are very hard to find yes. these days. Yes, huh? yes. So if someone is looking for a job and they're part of our particular program, we will, like any career counselor or job counselor you find anyplace else, we sit down and do interest evaluations and assessments. Mm -hmm. We say, what do you want to do? What are you interested in? What kind of skills do you have? Mm -hmm. um, and then we help <coughs> folks come up with a resume, write your resume. Mm -hmm. And practice, like you said, practice interviewing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, practice getting ready for, you know, to do the job when you once you get it. And we have a whole system of supporting individuals to apply for positions and to go to interviews if they want. You know, whatever the individual wants or needs around applying for and getting a job, we want to be there for them. But it's their choice, and they get to decide what they do. Do you go with, well, my question, my next question would be, do you go with them to the interview or not? Or how does that work? It all depends on what they're asking for. We ask them, do you want us to be there? Do you, you know, what needs do you have around that? We will take them to the interview, and we'll even sit in on the interview if they want. Most of the time we don't because it really is their interview. And, and most of the time it's competitive employment just like well, anybody else. So mm -hmm. a lot of employers don't want us in the room. So it all, again, it all depends on the needs of the individual. And we mm -hmm. do a lot of prep ahead of time for the interviews, so. Do you provide, because <clears throat> I've been a job coach as well. Right. Do you provide job coaches or, or on, um, on the job, or um, how does that work with you? Right. Again, it all depends on um, the needs and the abilities of the individuals. Mm -hmm. um, we do provide job coaching, which is our philosophy is to support the person to be successful. Mm -hmm. And that means on the job, depending on what the job tasks are um, or the environment, we would just be there to support and motivate and encourage and assist a little bit depending on again the ability of the individual that we're working mm -hmm. with everything again is based on how to support success mm -hmm. and working with the employer you know like if something comes up to provide an opportunity for the employee to have a voice in saying this isn't working at work or this is working um, and how can we you know adjust the situation in order to help for success. Okay. So. so in terms of you being mm -hmm. an instructor, so you would basically, like with the mock interview stuff, you would have a class on that or mm -hmm. how would that work with you? Two things to keep in mind. One, it, it's not practical to do a class for one or two people. Ah. So often there are individualized services around things like interviews. Uh, and that person would have an employment representative mm. that would work with them on that one-to-one. -one. If I had four or five people, I might do a class. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so how long have you, you've been working for Washington County? Like, um, what does your experience, like, where, um, obviously you have experience working with people with special needs. So um, in, in your past, Washington County, 
so so would you say that your um, experience from the past brought you to Washington County, or how did you end up working for? It? I, I I have a circular resume. Mm -hmm. uh, my mm -hmm. first job out of college was teaching high school for a number of years. Mm -hmm. Then I became a parent and I took a break and then I worked for Vogue Rehab, the State oh. Department of Vocational Rehabilitation part-time. And then I got a job for Washington County Mental Health. I didn't go back into teaching until about eight years ago where wow. I had an opportunity to teach once again. Wow. So I've had several different hats for Washington County Mental Health in the last 25 plus years. Um, but I have come back to home again. <laughs> wow. It's, and have, it's you fun. have to have a passion to work yeah, in yeah. special needs. Um, which brings me to this. What are the misconceptions mm. around people with special needs when you first meet them? Because that is such a good question. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if I'm sitting there with somebody who takes a minute to, to speak their mind, and I'm in that restaurant you referenced earlier, the wait staff might come up and talk to me. Mm. And I might look at them and mm. just point at the person I'm with, and mm. redirect them to speak to that person. Mm. And they may not, <coughs> they may pick from the menu mm. by pointing to it rather than speaking what they want. That's fine. That's a way of communicating. That's a way of communicating. They might bring uh, an iPad and type what they want. That's another way of communicating. Sometimes it's or just an redirection. Or an augmentative <coughs> device. Yes. For mm -hmm. example because I've, I've been around that situation. Mm -hmm. So what misconceptions mm -hmm. do you find? Well, I mean, and the misconception there is that the individual couldn't speak or doesn't have the ability communicate. to communicate with individuals that they're with. Another misconception mm -hmm. is that they don't have the skills or abilities to have a job mm -hmm. or to contribute or to live independently, mm -hmm. which is a big misconception. Mm -hmm. it's, and we need to demystify these myths. It's not true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I have folks who get support services that teach classes with me. Right. Mm -hmm. And who are you going to listen to if you are receiving services? Me mm -hmm. or the person who is also receiving mm -hmm. services? It makes sense yeah. for the person who also receiving services. So um, in, in the last of this first part, because we're going to do a, a second part to this, um, what are the future goals of the Learning Network? What future goals do you have uh, that, right. you know, that of course you want to continue the learning network? Right. We want to grow. We want to be able to impact as many individuals that want to be a part of the learning network. That's really important. We're actually looking to change the name of it um, to, to um, really, again, reflect that we're evolving and growing and impacting as many people as possible. Mm. And uh, the other thing for me is making it accessible, mm. you know, like providing the opportunity for anybody mm. that wants to participate. And that for me, <laughs> I don't want money to be a reason why. Yeah. Um, and so finding other opportunities, other funding sources mm -hmm. that can support the learning network is really important. You know, going after grants yeah. um, or other resources, donations that will support the work. And I mean, I think the other thing is growing some of the programs that we have yeah. and providing, again, providing mm -hmm. A lot of diverse opportunities. Yeah. That it's not just one thing that we're doing that we like because the, the anybody has different interests and passions. And so how can our program reflect that? Okay. Well, I'd like to thank you for joining me in this um, first part of Able Den On Air with Washington County Mental Health and the Learning Network. Uh, for more information on Washington County Mental Health Services, you can log on to uh, www.wcmhs.org. Or if you have an emergency, a mental health emergency, you can uh, call 802-229-0591. That's 802-229-0591. Thank you for joining us on this edition of Able Dinner on Air. I'm Lauren Seiler. I'm Arlene Seiler. See you in the second half. See you next time.